Hey, this is Professor Perez. Again, today we are going to look at absolute values and the opposites of numbers. But before we get started, we need to get out our student volunteer. Charlie, he better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, ready to go? All right, let's get started right there. Absolute value. Well, the absolute value represents a distance. It represents a distance on a number line. So that's why absolute values are always positive because they represent distances. Like you wouldn't say, the distance from my home to school is negative 12 miles, right? You always say positive numbers for distance. That's why absolute values are always positive. So the absolute value of negative 3 represents the distance between 0 and negative 3 on the number line. So let's take a look at a number line. Here's negative 3, and notice negative 3 is 3 units from 0 on the number line. Therefore, the absolute value of negative 3 is 3, positive 3. Okay, how about the absolute value of positive 3? Well, let's look at the number line. Notice positive 3 is 3 units from 0 on the number line. And therefore, absolute value of 3 is positive 3, right? How about the absolute value of negative 10? How far is negative 10 from 0 on the number line? It's 10 units that way. And so the absolute value of negative 10 is positive 10. Here we have the absolute value of the expression negative 3 plus 5. Now, earlier in the semester, we were talking about order of operations. And the first category of order of operations was parentheses and other grouping symbols. And I mentioned we would be talking about those other grouping symbols later in the semester. Well, here it is. Absolute values fall in that first category. You treat them as parentheses. So, in this case, we have to simplify the expression within the absolute value before we evaluate the absolute value here. So, negative 3 plus 5 is a positive 2. We bring down the absolute value, and now we will evaluate the absolute value. And the absolute value of 2 is 2, because 2 is 2 units from 0 on the number line. Here we have the absolute value of negative 3 subtract 5. Notice we have an expression within the absolute value, so we must simplify that expression first. Negative 3 subtract 5 is a negative 8, and the absolute value of negative 8 well, negative 8 is 8 units to the left of 0 on the number line, and therefore the absolute value of negative 8 is positive 8. All right, Charlie, now let's talk about the opposite of a number. Now, don't get scared. The opposite of 3 is negative 3. Now, pay attention, Charlie. Note, both 3 and negative 3 are both a distance of 3 from 0 on the number line. Positive 3 is 3 units to the right, negative 3 is 3 units to the left. So 3 and negative 3 are considered to be opposites of each other. So what is the opposite of a positive 5? Positive 5 is 5 units to the right of 0. Charlie, what number is 5 units to the left of 0 on the number line? Negative 5. That's negative 5. So negative 5 is considered to be the opposite of 5. Okay. Now, what is the opposite of negative 5? What do you think, Charlie? 5. That's right. It is positive 5. So notice here, opposites of positive numbers will always be negative, and opposites of negative numbers will always be positive. Now, how do we mathematically calculate the opposite of a number? To explain this, we kind of have to jump ahead, because here's how you translate that word statement into a math statement. Notice we put a negative sign. That represents the opposite. And we put a positive 5 in parentheses. So this math statement is basically asking you, what is the opposite of a positive 5? Well, the opposite of positive 5 is negative 5, and that's your answer. But later in the semester, we will find out that to mathematically calculate the opposite, you multiply a number by negative 1. So if you think of it that way, let's jump ahead, a negative 1 times a positive 5 is a negative 5. That is why a negative times a positive is negative, because opposites of positive numbers are always negative. Now let's look at this other word statement. What is the opposite of a negative 5? Well, let's put our opposite symbol. Let's put negative 5 in parentheses. And what's the opposite of negative 5? It's a positive 5. Remember, opposites of negative numbers are always going to be positive. Now in this case, if we treat that opposite sign as a negative 1, then you have negative 1 times negative 5, which is positive 5. 
This is the reason why a negative times a negative is positive because opposites of negative numbers are always going to be positive. Opposites of negative numbers are always positive. We'll talk more about negative times a negative later on in the semester. You can always look at opposites as multiplying by negative 1. You'll see. So what's the opposite of positive 3? That is a negative 3, right? Opposites of positive numbers are always going to be negative. What's the opposite of a negative 3? That's going to be positive 3, because opposites of negative numbers are always positive. Again, yes, some of you are thinking ahead. You can treat that problem there as negative 1 times negative 3, which is a positive 3, the same way. Here we have the opposite of the absolute value of 3. Now remember, order of operations says you must perform parentheses and other grouping symbols first before you do the rest. In this case, we have the absolute value of a positive 3. We must evaluate that first before we take the opposite. So the absolute value of a positive 3 is 3. And then we have that opposite sign outside. And the opposite of a positive 3 is negative 3. Okay, here we have the opposite of the absolute value of negative 3. All right. Again, we have to evaluate that absolute value before we take the opposite. And the absolute value of negative 3 is a positive 3. And then we have this opposite sign. And the opposite of a positive 3 is negative 3. Later in the semester, we're not going to say opposite of 3. We're going to say negative 1 times 3, right? But for now, we're using the word opposite. So bear with me, please. And you too. All right, Charlie, let's get going on here now. Here we have the opposite of the expression 7 subtract 5. So we have parentheses. Let's simplify what's in the parentheses. 7 subtract 5 is 2. And what's the opposite of 2, Charlie? Negative 2. Very nice, and that's your answer there. Here we have the opposite of the expression 5 subtract 9. We have to simplify what's in the parentheses first. 5 subtract 9 is negative 4. And the opposite of negative 4 is what, Charlie? Positive 4. Very nice there, positive 4. Now, here we have the opposite of the absolute value of the expression negative 3 subtract 2. Subtract 3. OK. Well, you have to evaluate what's inside the absolute value first. Negative 3 subtract 2 is a negative 5. Bring down our absolute values and bring down the rest of our work. We still have an absolute value. Remember, that's in the category of parentheses and other grouping symbols. It's the first category of order of operations. So we have to evaluate that absolute value of negative 5 first. That is a positive 5. Now, we bring down our work. We have an opposite in front of it, and a subtract 3. Now, we're going to evaluate the opposite of 5, because remember, opposites can be treated as multiplying by negative 1. And you have to do multiplication before you do subtraction. So taking the opposite actually falls in the multiplication category. OK, so we take the opposite of 5, or negative 1 times 5, which is negative 5. Bring down your work, and negative 5 subtract 3. Negative 5 subtract 3 is a negative 8 there. There you go. That completes absolute value and opposites. We'll see you again soon.